I hope this is an encouragement because when you look at the life of Paul, you, you got to admire him. He did the right things. He kept his patience with God. Thank you for taking the time to listen to our weekly service. This is a listener-supported ministry, and we ask that you pray and see what God would have you give. Now let's get to our sermon for today. This morning I'd like to talk to you about some of the hardships of uh, the Apostle Paul and relate to us. Sometimes you think that the whole world's coming down. We just had something yesterday, a brief, try to briefly. Uh, everything we do, like our alarm system, our TV, everything's through the internet and our cameras that we have and all of a sudden we didn't have anything. Uh, we didn't know because we weren't watching it. We were doing other things, and then we went to turn it on. It wasn't there, so I went outside. You know, they're putting the pipes in. I, I told the guy, I said, somehow you cut a, uh, a wire. We don't have Internet. And we got to looking. He said, no, no, i here. And I said, well, what about back at the pole? And sure enough, there it was cut. He said somebody backed into it and didn't realize it. So then I couldn't get anybody out that day. And uh, so we tried to fix it. And, uh, and I, I thought by splicing the wire together, I could make it work, but it didn't work that way. And then I thought of another way to do it, but it was too late that evening, so we decided to forget it. We just watched some TV over the air. And, uh, but the problem is we couldn't put our alarm on or any of this other stuff. And, uh, and it made me realize how dependent we are on things, you know, whether you like it or not. But what I'm getting at is this morning, I said, oh no, the sermon is out on the cloud. <laughs> I use Dropbox. Well, I can't get out there. And I'm going, man, how am I going to get, I can't get the sermon. And then I went, oh, well, wait a minute, let me see, I'll try to use the, uh, the iPhone as a hotspot. Well, I tried to do that, but the speed was so slow, I, I would wait and wait it, and I wasn't getting it downloaded. And, uh, and I tried all kinds of different things. Then I had a problem. I said, well, with this out, can I send the stuff to the, to the printer? Because it's set up for uh, AirDrop. And, uh, and so I tested one, and I found that, okay, I can print. That, but how am I going to get that? I tried. I even went as far as I finally got it on the computer. I couldn't get it on the thing. Just as a backup, I printed it, <laughs> the sermon. I finally got it up. But it took me one hour to get things back. Now, I didn't fix anything, but to bypass things to make it all work, and which wasted a lot of time. Then, at what time was it? 4.30. 4.30, the fire alarm goes off, right? The one that's just in the hall in the bedroom. And, uh, and that nothing wakes me up. So the next thing I know, my wife's waking me up. This thing, the battery's low. It says battery low, battery low. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> I couldn't get that thing off the wall to save my life. <laughs> then when I finally got it off the wall, I couldn't get the door o- all the way open to, to put the batteries in. And finally, it took me a while to bypass that. And I said, man, and I finally got it on, connected it, and sh- she went back to bed. And I decided not to get up as early as I normally do to give her a little bit more sleep. But she never did go back to sleep. She just wrestled the whole time. And so what I'm getting, and the only reason I'm bringing this up this morning is because we're going to look at the hardships. We think our hardships are something. But what we go through in our life doesn't even compare to what Paul did. And let's look at that in 2 Corinthians 11.23. It says, Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labor, more abundant. In stripes, above measure. In prison, more frequent. In death, often. Of the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes, save one. Three times I was beaten by the rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I suffered shipwrecks. A night and a day had I been in the deep. In journeys often, in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the cities, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watching often, 
in hunger and in thirst, in fasting often, in cold and nakedness. Oh, I, I said something, and we're going to talk about some of these things. And we have our share of hardships in life. But what the whole thing and the purpose I'm bringing this to you is, Paul never let that stop him. Everything he went through never slowed him down. Unless they just put him in prison, you know. But even then, we're going to talk about that a moment. And we complain and let hardships get a hold of us and destroy our relationship with the Lord or we get mad or, 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 or am I ever going to get out of it? Like we're still, our internet's not fixed. At least they're supposed to come out at 1 o'clock today and fix it. You know. But our problems are nothing compared to the Apostle Paul. And then when we take it, we're going to take a close, closer look, not at everything, but a closer look. And what, what we go through in our whole life, and, and here's another thing. Paul didn't just have problems at one time for one month and all. This was throughout his whole life he went through all this stuff. And uh, this is just a, a condensed version of what took place. So he suffered a lot of things in the name of God. Now, Paul was as close to God as any human being could be. Think about that now. As close as he was, look at all that he went through. And we're nowhere as close to God as he was. But yet, sometimes we let stuff like that get to us. Look in Galatians chapter 1, verse 11. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after men. For I neither received it of men, neither was I taught it, but by the revelations of Jesus Christ. Paul was sent out to a desert place for three years, and God spoke to him after he got saved and taught him. And he received a lot of revelation. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 2, If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given to me, to you were how by the revelations he made known unto me the mysteries as I write aforehand in a few words. Think about this. Now, he was close enough to God that God blessed him to be all the epistles are written by Paul. Our Bible is made up by the things that Paul wrote by the inspiration of God. He was close to God and served him as much as anybody could. And yet, with the, all those hardships he went through, I don't remember him complaining one time in Scripture. Matter of fact, this is interesting, we'll get to it in a minute. Number one on Paul's list, his first prime thing that he considered in everything he did was patience. Patience. Number one. Here's what happened. Uh, Howard Whitman quoted this. Life is composed of waiting periods. The child must wait until he's old enough to have a bicycle. A young man uh, must wait until he's old enough to drive a car. A medical student must wait for his diploma. A husband for his promotion. A young couple for savings to buy a new house. The art of waiting is not learned at once. It's over a period of a lifetime as we try to do things. And then it says here, in stripes above measure, I want to talk about the stripes he was talking about, about the beatings that he got. Vernon McGee says this, the Jews had a method in those days of delivering 39 stripes and to prevent someone from dying. They literally could die from this, getting uh, beat there. Uh, I see, uh, to prevent killing the person, they would apply 13 stripes on one side of the back, then 13 on the other side of the back, and then 13 in the middle, just so they wouldn't die. Paul had this done, tortured, happened to him five times through Scripture. Five times. Three times he was beaten by a rod. He was stoned once. And in weariness and painfulness, he suffered. You think about this. And a lot of us got this problem. I know Angel's got it. Uh, my wife's got it right now. Uh, and not that you live with a lot of pain. 
Paul had to, all that stuff he went through had to give him pain in the future. Plus he had the thorn in the flesh, which we suspect was the eye problem. Many times he was without food and drink. He never asked for money, but one or two churches did occasionally send him money. So a lot of times they had to work or do something. By the way, just to make sure you understand, Paul came from a rich family. He was, I always tell people, and even though it technically doesn't say this, his education was equivalent to a doctor's degree today. He was, and it mentions who his teacher was in the Bible, and he it was one of the best teachers of his day. He was, and he quote, Pharisee of the Pharisee. He had it all, and he gave all that up to serve God and get saved. And the list just goes on and on. Then in verse 6 and 7, it shows us how he used patience. And in 2 Corinthians 6 and 6, that's 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 6, it says, By pureness, by knowledge, by long-suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfreighted, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness, and by the right hand, on the right hand, and on the left. By knowledge. I mean, you've heard this almost in every sermon. The more you know about the Lord, the more you can use what God would have for us. If you don't know how to use it, how are you going to use it? Unless you learn how to pray properly, or how to depend on the Lord, and what you're going to go through in life. This, hopefully, today is going to teach you that life is full of problems. And it's going to kind of constantly go there. And, uh, and as Paul lived through it, so can we. And we're never going to have to go through what he went through. He suffered many things. It says here, it's an interesting thing. He says, by knowledge, uh, know as much as God's word as you can. Suffer through many things even through kindness and the Holy Spirit, and by love. When you really love someone, patience kicks in, does it not? Now, I'm not going to go to it, but 1 Corinthians chapter 13 is what? The love chapter of the Bible. It's the definition of love. Love forgives. Love has patience. Love, it just endures and all. And Paul did that. And so should we. Paul's patience in his endurance. This is more or less what comes out of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 8 through 10. I'm not reading that, but I'm going to tell you. Paul is honest, and yet he's been called a liar. He is known, and yet he's unknown. He is dying, and yet he lives. He is sorrowful, yet always rejoices. He is poor, and yet makes many rich. He has nothing, yet possesses everything. Remember, he had all the revelations and the mystery he had. Some of it he couldn't tell. God is teaching us here the love of a father. The Heavenly Father loves us. Just the way we, he adopted us into the family. We are his children. We never know, here's a good quote by Henry Breacher. We never know the love of our parents for us till we become parents. Because you know how much you love your children. And that ought to make you realize how much your, your parents loved you. God's way is the best way for a good life, even through all our hard, hardships that we go through. That is what God is trying to tell us here through his word. You're going to go through it. Now, God doesn't God permits it to happen, but he doesn't make it happen. But he lets things come into our lives just so we would trust him and look to him and hopefully learn from it so the next time it happens, you can rejoice and and be excited. How is God going to work this out this time? 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7 says this, But we have this treasure in earthly vessels. And the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. 
we got to stop depending on us, stop putting us first, and put God ahead of time. If that happens, you, when you start learning this thing, you're going to say, why didn't I do this sooner? It's not about us. It's all about God. Look, uh, uh, um, let's see. In verse 8, I didn't put the actual thing there. How did I do that? Oh, no, I'm sorry. We're still in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Okay, I just read verse 7. Now we're going to go to verse 8. We are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not despaired. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body of the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. A lot of things can happen to us according to this verse, but it's never going to kill us. Doing what God would have us to do. No one ever really looks at their life. Let me rephrase that. When one really looks at their life, many of us have more than a whole lot of other people. Never get to the point where you you discuss it with your life because somebody else is worse off than you are. Everybody, God deals with everybody different. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 4, it says, built in all things approval ourselves, approving ourselves as the ministers of God in much patience. Every place you look where God talks about things, patience is always the number one thing. Think about that a moment. Now, that ought to hit us right there. Work at it. Have patience. The moment you're going about to say something, you go, nope, nope. I'm not going to do it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be nice to my wife. I'm going to be nice to my son or my whatever, or to the friend that's knocking me. Yeah, I was just reading Proverbs today, and what's it say? Even a fool, when he's kept quiet, shows wisdom. Some fools don't know how to keep their mouth shut. <coughs> In affliction, in necessities, in distress, in stripes, imprisonment. By the way, when Paul ended up in prison one time, now his prison, it says he was shackled, they had guards, and the place did not, probably mud floors, you know, got to be rats in there. And what's he doing? He's singing and praising God. Think about that. Singing and praising God in the worst environment. That's the way we should approach every problem and hardship we'll go through in our life. Look at the bright side of it. I literally, all the places I've traveled on the motorcycle, and when we have a couple breakdowns, when I started seeing God work the first couple times how it worked out and got us back on the road it always amazed me how it all I got to the point that when it happened again I got excited saying I wonder how God's going to work this one I literally I did and we did everything we could we prayed about it tried to figure out and every time it was just amazing how God worked and got us back on the road I mean even places uh, see, Crow was with me that time, and a couple other. We were heading to D.C., and in my shovel, there's a. Oh, I'm gonna call it a rotor. It just it all it is. A, it looks like a cup about that deep. It has a cutout, and for the electrical ignition, when it when that opening hits, it activates the the mechanism. It broke. Never heard of that, that happening, and it broke right around the bottom of the cup. I'm going to go, man, how, how, are we, how am I going to get back on the road? And then we got this bright, uh, we sent Crow with that to see if somebody could tack weld it back. 
Well, they had the machine, but the guy that ran it was gone. And they, uh, Barry Crow could uh, do the, the machine itself, but they wouldn't let Tech because he wasn't an employee. So he came back. He said, Glenn, I don't know what to do. And then I kept saying, does anybody have a washer? What do you mean? It's going to have to be a pretty good-sized washer. I said, the break happened after the run. I said, maybe, just maybe, we could put that washer in there and screw it and tighten it up. And it worked. And we made it all the way to Richmond, which was, I don't know, about 80 miles. Found a Harley shop to buy another rotor. And, uh, and when I took it off, it was still hot. And I sat it down. And the guy said, yeah, you need that. I said, that got me here. He says, there ain't no way that I got you here. I said, I'm telling you, the Lord bless that we got here. And we put this washer in there. And see, that's what I'm getting at. That's highly unusual. God may sometimes present something to you or give you the wisdom to figure it out. But regardless, and what's James say? If you lack wisdom, ask. And that's what it's talking about here. And then he says, in labors and watching and fasting and uh, pureness, by knowledge again, here's knowledge again, by the long suffering and by kindness, by the Holy Ghost working in your life, by love unfreighted again, by the word of the truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness, on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as chastened and not killed, as sorrowful and yet always rejoicing, as poor and yet making rich, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. Isn't it funny that similar to this is elsewhere in the Bible that I quoted you already? 2 Timothy 1.6 Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God. Stir it up. Use it. Which is in you through the laying on my hands, of my hands. For God has given you a spirit, the Holy Spirit, of fear and the power and the love and the sound mind. We got to rely on the Spirit. Thank God the Holy Spirit's praying for us, but we still got to pray ourselves. 2 Timothy 4 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itchy ears, and they shall turn away from the ears of the truth, and shall be turned away unto fables. That's what's happening right now. And that's what's going to happen even worse. There's a falling away taking place right now. A lot of people that are professing Christians aren't going to church anymore. They're backing off. They're not going there. Uh, Mike Schrock agreed with me. The churches he goes to, he said once in a while he meets the church is still going pretty strong. But in general, it's a falling away. And then you have the ones that they go to church and get like watching TV or going to a concert. And, uh, they're being entertained. And, oh, you know, oh, man, I had a great time in church. But there's no growth. I, I'm not sure if I mentioned this before, but Doc Hay showed me this while he was alive in the office one time. He said, Glenn, this is really interesting. He said, this is the mega church in California. And the pastor and the, uh, and the deacons and all have come to a conclusion that they're doing things the wrong way. People aren't truly growing in the Lord. And they were doing the entertaining. And they finally decided they're changing everything. They want the people to grow, to trust God, to depend on God, to become in, uh, mature in God. People are not respond and even yesterday I told the guys I said listen I said I'm not an expert but this is something I see I said the biking world as we know it all of them are, are retired they're sore or they can't get on the bike anymore <laughs> and like me having arthritis and everything and, uh, and uh, thank for my wife 
knock at me. I don't have enough sense to stop going long distance and all. But <laughs> we got we got to know our weakness sometimes, and sometimes men just don't do that. But yet, we figured out another way of, of doing it. And I actually, on the way in one day, I did get cramp up on my my uh, clutch hand. Not for holding the clutch, it just started cramping up a little bit. And then I thought to myself, what if I was on that 500 mile journey going down and somebody slammed on their brakes in front of me when that happened? I was praising the Lord that, that uh, you know, I have enough sense to listen to my wife. Be careful that you're not one of the people that let the hardships and things in life bring you down. That's the key to this whole sermon. Don't let things around us that happen. We're going to go through them. It's never going to stop. We're going to have times when nothing happens. That's great. And all. But things will happen. And eventually, like, I was hoping I could get the Internet guys out yesterday. And the lady on the phone, because I said, listen, this wasn't our fault, you know. Even the people out there, the construction, said he would normally call his supervisor and get something done. He said, but it was Saturday. They normally don't even work Saturday. I think they're behind. So they would, but she says, I can't call nobody. Nobody's there at the office. And, uh, and so we tried our best to get it back on. It did, and we may do. Okay, so we went through it. And uh, unfortunately, we let the alarm wake us all up. But, uh, but we're still here. We made it today. And we had good fellowship. That's the one thing I'm going to mention at the blessings of the bike about our service. I said we have good times of talking about things of bikes, land, surgery. (laughs) (laughs) I hope this is an encouragement because when you look at the life of Paul, you, you got to admire him. He did the right things. He kept his patience with God. And kept following God. He said he looked forward to the time he would be with the Lord. But I'm paraphrasing the scripture. But he says, but I have a lot more to do here. (laughs) So for that reason, he didn't want to go to heaven right away. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this opportunity. I pray that those that hear it on the internet as well as us here, that will be an encouragement. I pray for those that are unsaved that they'll come to know Christ as their Savior. They give us a call. Contact us. Go to our website. It's on. It'll be at the end of the video. Father, I do thank you that uh, one of the, I guess I call her lady and all that was riding a bike yesterday, came up to me after I prayed yesterday that she says, I really enjoy your sermons. So people are listening to them on, on there. And, uh, and uh, so I pray that the Holy Spirit would work in people's lives and help draw them to Thee. And that everything gets done is through the power of the Holy Spirit. And we thank You, Father, for that He prays for us, that He intercedes for us, and that Christ is up there interceding for us. We got it made if we just put our faith in Thee. Help us, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray that we have been a blessing to you. For further assistance, call us at 864-270-1472 anytime. Send email to info at stlmm.org or visit our website at www.stlmm.org. Like any ministry, it costs money to operate. Please consider supporting this ministry as God leads you with your prayers and your financial gifts by going to www.stlmm.org and clicking on Donations.